Good morning all. Today I've dug out uh, an Arduino. It's a Nano, which is uh, which has the Uno bootloader, but that doesn't really matter particularly. I've put it on one of these expansion boards, so I've got lots of um, access to pins. And I've also put a pot on here because I want to send in, a, send in a varying input. This is going into analog A0. And what I really want to do here is I want to experiment with the PWM output. So I think that's uh, pin three, five and six, is it? Nine and 10 and 11. I think those are the uh, PWM outputs because I want to see how versatile uh, the PWM outputs are. One thing I'm going to do, of course, is change the frequency of the PWM outputs. Uh, I also want to see what sort of complex waveforms I can get using combinations of PWM outputs. So this is all to do with my Muppet 2 project, which has this uh, arrangement of four MOSFETs with Schottky diodes and an inductor running across the middle. And with suitable signals uh, put into the gates of these four MOSFETs, this can be uh, a buck converter, a boost converter, a buck boost. Uh, it can be non-synchronous, synchronous. It can be continuous, discontinuous. Uh, it's also bidirectional, so you can send energy from one side to the other or vice versa. And uh, I want to produce these four gate drive signals using an Arduino. So I'm very interested to see what combinations of uh, signal patterns I can get out of four of these PWM outputs. So I'm going to need the uh, oscilloscope to look at the waveforms coming out of here. Now this oscilloscope is a two channel, but you can use the trigger input um, or external input, external trigger it says there actually, as a third channel. It's not analog, it's digital, but that's fine because we're looking at uh, pulse width modulation signals. Right, so let's start with something really simple. Uh, all this sketch does is in the loop, I've put an analog right to pin D11, and the value I'm putting out to that is whatever comes in on A0, in other words, on the pot, divided by four, because uh, analog reads are 10-bit, so up to 1023, uh, maximum number, and analog writes are 8-bit, so that's up to 255, so divide the 1023 by four, and then that can be written out as a PWM value. Let's see what that does. And uh, it does this, it produces a uh, square wave, a pulse width modulated square wave. And if I adjust the potentiometer, of course, I can uh, reduce the duty cycle so the on time is short, or I can increase uh, the duty cycle so the on time is long. I can go all the way up to uh, permanently on, and I can go all the way down to permanently off. So let's put that back to 50%. Right, let's switch on the uh, measure thing. And that's giving me uh, a frequency of 490.39 hertz, which I believe is correct. And uh, here on the Arduino PWM cheat sheet, uh, we can see that now I'm doing pin 11, aren't I? So you can see here that the default setting is 490.2 Hertz, so that's pretty close. Now, 490 hertz is not going to be anywhere near fast enough for driving these MOSFETs. Um, you'd need one heck of a huge inductor to run at that low frequency. So we need to raise the frequency of this PWM signal uh, way above 490 hertz. So let's go back to that cheat sheet and see what frequencies are available. Well, we have the list here uh, for pins 11 and 3 which uh, both come from timer two, we can issue this uh, command here, this C command, where we're changing the value in TCCR2B. This is timer two, uh, con timer something, control register, I think it is. Uh, and it with this value here, which is a F8 hexadecimal, and or it with setting. Now I'm gonna go to the highest frequency, 31.3 kilohertz, setting there is hexadecimal 01. So I'm gonna type this in the setup uh, with hexadecimal 01 in setting here. So here it is, uh, in setup I've got TCCR2B is TCCR2B anded with F8 hexadecimal or with 01 hexadecimal and that should change the frequency to 31 point whatever it was, three I think, kilohertz. Let's uh, compile that and upload it and see what the effect of that is. 
and it's this. I mean, it's certainly running a lot faster. Uh, the measurement frequency measurement is saying 31.4 kilohertz. Let's just expand that out so that we can see it. And uh, yes, 31.385 kilohertz. I'm still able to uh, change that between, well, 0% uh, pulse width modulation and 100% pulse width modulation. I'll leave it there on 50% for the moment. Right, well, that's fine for driving one MOSFET, but uh, what if I want to drive two MOSFETs? What if I want to drive uh, MOSFET A, the high side MOSFET, and MOSFET B, the low side MOSFET? And uh, I want to drive them according to this. This is a, a set of waveforms from the LTC3780, which is the buck boost converter, but it conveniently tells me what I need to do now I've labeled my switches here, my MOSFETs, uh, A, B, C, D, the same as they're labeled here. So in buck mode, for example, I want to be switching uh, MOSFET A off and MOSFET B on, uh, but there's a little bit of um, non-overlapping going on there. Uh, but essentially what's happening is when switch A is on, switch B is off. What if I want to do that? Well, the first thing I'm going to have to do is uh, fire up a second PWM channel. So now the first channel, which is the yellow, uh, this yellow uh, probe, is on pin 11. The other pin on that same timer is actually pin 3. So let's uh, connect that up. That's there. Digital pin 3. So that's on green. I'm going to have to switch on the other trace on my oscilloscope so I can see that. Um, I think what I'll also do is put another pot on here. I've got another pot here. I'll put this on analog A1 so that I can independently control uh, channel 11 and channel 3 with these two pots, and then I can look at those on the scope. Right, so this uh, timer 2 being changed to 31 kilohertz applies to both pins 11 and 3 because they're both derived from timer 2, so that will work on both the channels I'm using. What I will have to do though is copy this analog right uh, to pin 11, pin D11. Uh, let's copy that and paste it in here. And I want to analog right to pin 3. So that's pin 3. And of course, I want to take that from pot, uh, the pot that's on analog input A1. Uh, the same divide by 4 should apply. So that should be fine. Let's compile and upload that. And that's given me uh, two outputs, which are on these pin 11 on the yellow trace and pin 3 on the green trace. Um, the first pot lets me control the duty cycle or the pulse width of uh, pin 11. And the second pot lets me control the pulse width of pin 3. What's interesting here is that these are synchronized to each other down the center of the on time. Uh, I suppose you could also say they're synchronized down the center of the off time. And I think that's because this uh, timer 2, with uh, pins 11 and 3, are using the phase correct uh, method of pulse width modulation on the 80 mega 328p chip. So they are absolutely locked together. They're the same frequency, of course. But uh, it's interesting to see how the phases of these two are completely locked together. Uh, the only difficulty here is that uh, both of these signals go high at the same time. So if I want to use them to drive switches A and B, and uh, remember that switches A and B are the high side MOSFET and the low side MOSFET on this side, um, I need to invert one so that one is always low going when the other is high going. And there is a way to invert these uh, by writing to the PWM registers. It's relatively straightforward. Right, so what I need to do is add another piece of uh, code to the setup, and it is this. Uh, TCCR2A, another control register, um, is awed with itself and hexadecimal 30 and that pushes two of the pins high. I'll have a look at which ones those are, or two of the bits in that register high, and that effectively inverts 
uh, the second channel, channel B, which I think is pin three, pretty sure it is. Right, so here's the data sheet for the Atmel 80 Mega 328P. Uh, it's actually for four different processors, but that one's included among them. Now we need uh, timer two, which is here. Let's go to this setting. I'll expand it out again when I found the right page. But I need to find the register that we write to uh, in order to uh, switch to inverting mode. Right, it's basically on this page here. So let's um, expand that out. I think it's that. No, it isn't. That's lost me my navigation uh, stuff. Anyway, never mind. This will do. Uh, down here it says um, inverting mode, which means I need to push COM2A1 and COM2A0 high. And here they are here in this position. So I need to leave these two alone. So that's 0, 0. Set these two highs, so that's 1, 1, so that becomes hexadecimal 3. Leave all this lot alone, so that's hexadecimal 0. So by oring in hexadecimal 30 into this register, TCCR2A, uh, I switch it so that um, the second channel, which comes out on digital pin 3, is inverted rel relative to digital pin 11. And uh, the result of that is this, when channel uh, A, let's call it MOSFET switch A goes high, MOSFET switch B goes low. Now looking again at this sheet here, we can see that um, they've actually got non-overlapping waveforms here. So switch B, which is my green trace, needs to be slightly um, smaller, slightly narrower than switch A, which I can do by just uh, advancing that a bit. And uh, so that's giving me exactly what we need for this buck mode. Uh, when switch A goes off, switch B comes on, but with these little sort of side bands so that the two MOSFETs are never switched so closely together that they might for a fraction of a second be on. You can see that you wouldn't want to turn these two MOSFETs on. That would be a very bad idea because you'd be basically shorting whatever is connected across there and that could be a low impedance uh, power supply. So that's given me the uh, waveform that I want. Now the thing is, if uh, this one gets smaller, this one also needs to get smaller. So these have to sort of track together and I'm turning these two pots together to keep those linked. Of course I can do that in software reasonably easy. I can uh, make those track together, but that's basically how I want it to work uh, in order to drive these two MOSFETs with this non-overlapping waveform. Um, so as a first step towards Muppet 2, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I've got waveforms that are going to be suitable for driving uh, buck mode, but actually they're also suitable for driving boost mode. It's uh, almost identical. Uh, you can see here that switches... Now this goes A, B, C at the bottom and D, so C and D are kind of back to front. So uh, C is the little short high one, where B is the little short high one. So in fact, it's uh, buck mode is identical to boost mode, it's just that you do it on the other pair of MOSFETs. Buck mode you control A and B, boost mode you control C and D. Now, the thing is, if this is bi-directional, then buck mode in that direction is actually boost mode in that direction. Will that work? Right, well that's as far as I'm going to take this uh, today. I've got these two waveforms, buck and boost. I haven't got these more complex waveforms where you're controlling all four MOSFETs, these are the buck boost modes. This is where the voltage on the input is very close to the voltage on the output. You want this one where V in, notionally V in of course, because uh, mine is bi-directional, so V in could be on either side. Uh, you want V in where V in is ever so slightly bigger than V out. You want this waveform where V in is slightly less than V out. You want this waveform, but I'll come back to these later on. These are going to be more complex to do, but certainly I've got that and that pretty much sorted out. So uh, for today, I'm happy. Cheerio.